It's time for another segment of the night. This is an absolute crowd favourite. It is Sam's investigative piece. Yeah. <laughs> Each episode he looks into a different topic that he refuses to let me have any input in the writing, directing, filming or editing of. This week we had him looking at breaches in hotel quarantine systems because if there's any uh, one thing he understands, it's being locked away from <laughs> it's being locked away from the world for weeks at a time. It's true. People don't know this, but I was actually the inspiration for Harry Potter. Well, just the start part where the parents lock the kid up under the stairs. <laughs> but I think yeah, I'm the authority on this subject. You are. Uh... Now look, I do have some bad news. Uh, I know as much people as people really like this segment, it may actually be the last episode of Sam's Investigative Piece. I know. Because uh, Little Birdie told me that Sam hasn't been getting location approvals <laughs> for the places he's been filming, and apparently he had a small run-in with security. Sam, do you want to tell us what happened? Yes, I have prepared a statement for this. <laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny that in the course of filming my most recent erotic thriller <laughs> that I had an unwanted interaction with local security. Allegedly, they felt I was intoxicated, to which I attempted to explain that was just in fact the way my body moves. <laughs> like a wind chime made of overcooked spaghetti. <laughs> It also may or may not have been the case that I did not seek approval for filming in various locations because I did not feel I had to. The name of the place is Fremantle. <laughs> I thought they were going to be chill about it. But it seems like someone had woken up on the wrong side of the hemp mattress. In future, I will be more diligent. Yours tally, Sam Upright's credit. <laughs> All right, let's see what you came up with. I bet it's a doozy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Wild and Wilder every time. I can't wait to see it. Sam's investigative piece. Oh, fuck yeah, it's so tight. Holy shit. My dad always said life's like a pistachio. It's a lot of work for a nut. Yeah. I said my dad. Speaking of sick people, WA was plunged into another three day lockdown after yet another hotel quarantine breach. Thankfully, three days was enough time for me to finally binge watch all of Netflix's Australian programming with three days to spare. But still, this left us wondering, what are we gonna do with sick people in the future? Do we give them medicine and care for them like they're white Australians? Or do we treat them like a burden to the taxpayer like everyone else? If it was up to me, I'd move them all far, far away. Like my mum does with my dogs or my grandparents when they get too old. Australia's already had multiple breaches across the state's hotel quarantine systems, leaving many West Australians saying, enough with the screw-ups. Because of this, many people are calling for the development of independent quarantine facilities, preventing the virus from getting out into WA and giving West Australians the old one-two curfew. But where would we even build something like this in WA? Maybe it could go here, or even here, or maybe even here. In the words of my therapist, this is something we should talk about because I'm getting very concerned. That's really good, Sam. You're making really good progress. Thanks, Dr. Young. No, no. Hi, I'm Sam Crick. I'm six foot seven and I have rheumatoid arthritis, AKA silly butt. I know nothing about law, the legal system, or the government and I'm haunted by the disappearance of my ex-wife 10 years ago. A conspiracy I'm sure goes all the way to the top. So come with me as we figure out the answers to this and more. Perth's recent lockdown was sparked after a guest in the McCure Hotel caught COVID whilst quarantining. The worst part is, he didn't test positive for it until he was infectious and out in the community. Which sucks, because it's like the worst time to be in the community. It's either that, 
or when there's a street fair up. It's a street. I should be able to drive down it. But now Cheryl's Candles is in the way. I got a bunch of candles in my car I gotta fucking pay for. And I gotta pay for Cheryl's funeral because they hit it with my car. Good thing I got those candles. Unfortunately, this isn't an isolated incident. In fact, many of Australia's recent infections have stemmed from leaks in the hotel quarantine system. Like when that security guard in Melbourne had that sex party. Whoa, rest capacity, buddy. Sure you can't fit one more in? Go on. Now, a lot of people may think that because our vaccine program is underway, we're safe. But the risk of transmission is still huge. And the longer we wait, the higher the chance of another significant breach like this. Never overestimate your ability to hold something in. Gotcha, it was just a balloon. Each of these breaches cost the government millions of dollars, and we're in no position to see another JobKeeper-like package like we did last year. But don't worry, you can still get free money from the government if you're Harvey Norman, Qantas, or an empathy coach for the Liberal Party. Okay, well, I understand where you're coming from with that, but how about next time, instead of laughing, remember last week we talked about crying? Yeah. I just, maybe just pretend it's one of your daughters. What do you mean, horny? There's just too many issues with WA's hotel quarantine system. Like poor ventilation, which can expose security guards and hotel personnel to the virus. Simply put, the hotel system is not designed for this. Ah! I fell on a needle. Because of this, the Australian Medical Association has called for the construction of dedicated quarantine facilities. Dedicated means they commit themselves to one thing. So I thought, Sarah. Since Federation, quarantine has been a responsibility of the federal government from times when ships would bring a dangerous plague to Australia like smallpox and the English. Sorry, mate, I don't know what we're doing. We can't do it here. I'm so sorry. But Skirtum doesn't want to pay for these facilities because he doesn't want the risk associated with the operation. It's funny how when it comes to forking up cash, all of a sudden Skirtum and his cabinet understand what no means, raise his eyebrows. But wouldn't this guy jump? At the chance to stop people entering Australia so easily, he might even get another trophy to put on his desk. And this isn't just some pipe dream. Facilities like this already exist in the Northern Territory in Howard Springs, named after John Howard. Or at least I assume so, because it's a small lot of nothing surrounded by dense bush. The facility is a disused workers' camp about 25 kilometres south of Darwin CBD. Residents were given their own little cabins with a kitchenette and a balcony. Sounds pretty fancy to me. Move over, Ritz-Carlton. It's a lot fancier than where I sleep at night, under a bridge with a man called Ritz-Carlton. And it's also a cheaper option for most states, at only 2,500 per individual and 5,000 for a family. And you get to keep any hitchhikers that you kill. Both Victoria and Queensland are looking to build similar venues, with Victoria expected to announce a successful bidder soon. However, these facilities won't be operational for several months to maybe even years. And that's still subject to federal approval. Oh man, I thought I told you you can't be here. What are you going to do about it? Eh? Cost of construction for a 500 bed site is said to be as high as $200 million, with the price tag shooting up to $700 million should the site be scaled as high as 3,000 beds. To put it in terms the government might understand, $700 million is how much in tax cuts ScoMo passed to the rich in 2020. <laughs> Just kidding, it was $20 billion. Go ahead and tell me how we can't afford it again. I'm listening. La 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 la. You know, in some countries, people get shot for protesting. La 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 la. That's how you listen, right, Scott? Now, one of the reasons people say we shouldn't build these facilities is that they'll be useless when the pandemic's over, like face masks or Zoom calls with my partner and her boyfriend. 
However, not all states want these facilities. Notorious political bad girl and New South Wales Premier, Gladys Berriblio, Bligli Berrian, Gladys Barry's Giggles, what's the name? Ah, Gladys Bigelow Mayo Gigolo. In between scandal, she said that in the beginning, states agreed to do the hotel quarantine system and just to accept the fact that there would be outbreaks and failures in the system and learn from it. Yeah, we could learn that it's an ineffective, outdated system. Gladys, if you were any more irrelevant, you would be a taxi. I'm bad at this. This is gonna keep happening unless we make a change. And to prove this, we showed how easy it is to breach hotel quarantine. Hotels were never meant to be a permanent solution. And as time goes on, the risks associated with our current system will become more and more evident. Despite the numerous breaches, Australia's Chief Medical Officer, Professor Paul Kelly, has said our current system is fit for purpose and is very successful. The Australian Medical Association has said we might need dedicated quarantine for years to come. And Dr. Kelly said we would definitely need it for the coming months due to the slow vaccine rollout and virus mutations. But for now, the federal government doesn't want to deal with the risk and it's leaving it up to the ill-equipped state government to deal with it, costing us more for less. Thanks for watching. I think I've been Sam Cripp. And Sarah, if you're watching, I left the dishes in the dishwasher. And also, Oi! I've... Oi! Oi. Oi. What are you still doing here? I was going to ask you the same question.